Welcome back here with us on Your World at 10. Home Minister P. Chidambaram strongly believes that India is a strong player in the global market in spite of the downside risks. And uh, Menaka Doshi caught up with him earlier in Davos and spoke to him about the global economic sentiment and his outlook going forward. Let's just listen. <laughs> Let me ask you for what you pick up as the global economic sentiment here in Davos uh, on occasion of the West Annual Meeting. Uh, degree of uncertainty, not entirely hopeless. They see recovery, but recovery is slower than what was predicted even a few months ago. 2010 has not been as good as they thought it would be. In 2011, uh, the prediction is even a slower global growth rate. So there is a lot of uncertainty. We are concerned about unemployment. There are concerns about high energy prices and commodity prices. There is also concern about food inflation. Nevertheless, I think uh, investor confidence, consumer confidence seem to be on the rise. So it's a mixed bag. As I said, therefore, uncertainty, but not hopelessness. So what do you expect will be then the case for the full year as we go through business plans, strategies, and then, of course, macroeconomic strategies for countries? What do we factor in as some, some of the downside risks? How do we work through what the next 12 months could bring? We can look forward to another year of robust growth, but the factors that could affect that growth are high energy prices, high commodity prices and perhaps food inflation. So in our policy making, in our drawing up of our schemes, we have to factor these aspects. How well have we dealt with it till now? Well, I can't comment on how well we have done it. We have dealt with it as well as we could. But looking to the future, we have to deal with it uh, effectively. In this multi-speed recovery, as everyone's been calling it here in Davos, uh, where do you see India stand in terms of how attractive an investment destination it continues to be? One has to study the dip in the FTI. That dip happened in the second half of 2010. We need to go into the causes of that. But I think going forward, we don't have to worry about uh, India continuing to be an attractive investment destination. Even in the last couple of hours, I heard a number of people say, but India, among other emerging economies, remains a very attractive investment destination. Um, I don't think uh, money that is meant for us will be diverted to the U.S. or to Germany. They are different economies which attract different kinds of investment for different purposes and for different industries. What we need is the basic industries brick and mortar industries and investment will flow into that. Several governments have gotten very inward looking. We're seeing degrees of protectionism uh, in countries across the world. All the austerity and belt tightening also means that you have to deal with a very unhappy citizenry. What do you make of uh, you know, the political equations across the world? Is this the next 10 years of globalization going to be very different from the last 10 years that we've seen? Well, each country is taking measures in its own self-interest. The U.S. has taken a set of measures. The U.K. has taken what I would call a set of completely opposite measures. Um, within the Eurozone, there are different voices. China has defended, and we heard it over the last couple of hours, China has defended what it's doing as not only in its self-interest, but in the interest of the globe. So I don't think we can be judgmental about these things. What we need to ask ourselves is, what should we do in our self-interest, number one, and in the larger global interest? Uh, I don't think uh, we need to worry about our future. As long as we continue to follow sound macroeconomic policies and we manage the different segments of the economy well, we don't make serious errors, I think we can look forward to a growth rate of 
over 8% and perhaps 9, 9.5% over the next decade. This despite our own shortcomings, whether they're government, governance or macroeconomic inflationary headwinds. We have our shortcomings. Despite our shortcomings, we are an important player and therefore it behoves us to overcome those deficiencies. We have a responsibility to govern ourselves more responsibly. What, in your assessment, how fragile do you think the condition in the Eurozone is in, with regards to are we likely to see uh, deep trouble with either Spain or Portugal based on all the conversations that you're having with business leaders? The European Union is extremely concerned about what's happening in some countries. I think the 27 countries that constitute the European Union will address these issues. The Ireland bailout is a classic example of how they can get together. Uh, they have created a new facility. They, they will, part of the funding will come from that facility. Part of it will come from Germany. Part of it will come from the IMF. I think they know what they have to do. And they're not, let, not going to allow a, a country of the European Union to fail. If this kind of growth continues, despite the tightening of monetary policy in China and all the other fiscal measures they're using, do you think it will continue to fuel inflation upwards for all other emerging markets, for other commodities, whether it's steel, metals, uh, oil, all of that? See, China has put in excess uh, capacity. They probably will slow down on investments. They are trying to stimulate domestic consumption. They will increase wage rates in order to stimulate domestic consumption. So I think uh, over the years they will bring down, I thought their, their plan for 2011 is about 8% growth. They probably will end up with 95 But they're making an effort. But the fact that you have an efficient uh, economic production machine <laughs> will turn out high growth. Uh, if there is so much investment and your um, uh, uh, I-core is quite high, it will result in high production. Uh, you can't become an inefficient economy f for the reason that you want to slow down growth. Sure. You have to uh, lower your investments, which is what I think they will do. If consumption rises as a result of stimulating domestic demand and increasing wages, perhaps investment will slow down. When investments slow down, uh, their output also may slow down. What are the consequences with regards to India and inflation, sir, for the course of the next year? It continues to dog us. Do you believe it will continue to be sticky through the year, both food and non-food inflation, especially with oil prices? Well, oh, the real concern, I think government has acknowledged that, is government spokesmen have acknowledged it. Dr. Rangarajan has, the governor has, that we don't want food inflation to spill over into generalized inflation. Uh, that is a concern. We have acknowledged it and I'm sure steps are being taken. Do you think we're behind the curve? That's a question we should put to the governor. Pijitam on growth and globalization over there. But